Before anything else, I just want to say that I might be a little behind schedule with a couple of videos as, um, well, COVID-19 has been kind of absolutely kicking my ass over the past week and I haven't got much of anything at all done, if I'm completely honest. Also, um, I have been asked why I don't uh, include pro tips in these 10 tip videos that I occasionally make. And, and the reason is very simple and intentional, you know, a lot of people just don't have pros, so I try to keep these tip videos to... Uh, be tips that anyone can use, but um, the more pro-related tips uh, will probably be in their own videos where I very specifically target, you know, pro subscription th features, but also at the end of this video I will include at least one pro tip as the 11th bonus tip, so to say. Alright, so the, the first tip is not actually uh, a tip so much as a new update that I kind of want to enlighten people on, and that is they have added, given us a new decal. So if you go into decals and you go to the main splatter page here, you'll see that there's a lot of new things here. And um, there's a lot of different ways you can use these, and I'm going to show a few examples soon, but basically what they've given us is multicolor decals. So the old one, splatter decal, is just... It was just a splatter, you know, and you could color it however you wanted, but now, because this one here, for example, has three different colors we can work with, we could essentially... We, 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 we can achieve multiple different effects at once. And then, obviously, this right here, the orange stains, could be blood, because, you know, he's been fighting, so we take a metal blood color and we smack it on. And now you see, just as a very basic example, uh, you can do a lot better than this, I'm sure. And uh, as I said, I'll show some examples soon, but um, basically, this is just one of the many, many things that you can do with the newest decals. And I think this is a great little update. It's uh, it's not a huge thing, but it helps a lot, so uh, thank you, Sky, Sky uh, thank you, Sky Castle. Now, for tip number two, let's move on and just assume that you are a, a huge, like, World of Warcraft Arthas fanboy. And, you know, you're, you're, try you're, you're making your, your little uh, fanfiction character and, uh, you know, you're, you're changing the, the hair color to black so that nobody will notice. But uh, you still want, you know, that evil cursed Frostmourne sword. Uh, but then you realize that the color is not quite working out, you know, you kind of want that blue evil glow from the cinematic so you know you, you try to find the blue but mm, i don't know th this this doesn't really quite work does it and uh, i briefly went over this in my uh, reworking subscribers video actually but uh, mm. basically what it is is so you take a color in this case i have this here uh, this sword color very basic bright steel and then you press the core key you go into advanced options and then you go down into glow and on the high specifically, you choose the high out of these three. You have to click the cog first, and then you go into high. You cannot just pull up the glow, because then it will just it will look like this. Um, but you go into high, and then you drag the color in this case into blue, and then you start pulling it up. And now look at the effect we get here. This is just gorgeous, isn't it? And we can emphasize this more if we make this original color darker. So we pull down the middle layer of this. Uh, and then we can we can do the same with the low layer as well, and yeah, now now we get an even more emphasized effects because now the, the 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 undertones are also uh, glowing blue. And um, as I said, I demonstrated this as well. Like you, you, this is very cool if you're choosing the swords that have like runes on them specifically. So if we scroll down here and we pick something like this sword, yeah, you can see now. Like imagine we also have this kind of glowing color if we duplicate this and we put it down into the runes here and then we make the glow even sharper specifically here yeah now you see you have this glowing in the middle um and then the rest of the steel just has this very nice like simple outline and um i think one of the best tricks if you're making like these kind of fantasy models with uh with you know enchanted swords this is probably the best way to go about doing it and you 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 can also have add other effects to this you can use decals on the blade uh, especially now with the new decals to make this even cooler all right so for tip uh number three i'm gonna show you how you can make really spooky looking eyes in her forge and um let's say you have a model maybe it's undead or maybe it's a psychopath or maybe it's you know someone who's really sick you know a uh, zombie maybe then you, what you can do if you go into eyes like because may, may, maybe the normal like undead eyes i mean glazing them over is is easy enough but like 
There's a way you can make them look like they're not really eyes at all, but just kind of blanked out. And you can use this for a lot of cool effects. So what you do is, I've always advocated for making the iris size small, but in this case, we're going to make the iris size huge. So we pull it all the way up like this, and now, you know, yeah, he looks like a baby. Then we, uh, we go down, we make the pupil very tiny, and then the pupil color we need to pretty much match. In this case, we're going to make it all pretty much brownish gray. So we're going to pull all the colors into the same kind of area as you can see here. And we are just going to start dragging them all in, diff in, in the same kind of yellowish direction. And now you can kind of see what I'm going for here in that because eyes in Hero Forge have a unique color, they don't work like anything else. I mean, if you try to put a cloth color in here, then yeah, it would just be blank. But the the eyes are obviously their own thing. They have this their own texture. You can't really edit them the way you do other colors, which means that you can do some very funky stuff with them. You can get textures that you can't otherwise get. And in this case, with these eyes, we've essentially just made them orbs of this really weird, strange, like, kind of yellowish yellowish brown pattern uh, this can be very creepy if used correctly believe me um, th this model right here might not be the best example for it but yeah when you see when I zoom out he begins to look really freaky like he, there's something very uncanny about this face all right so for tip number four I have a uh, what is effectively two tips in one, because neither of them felt like they were sufficiently uh, unique or new tips on their own, so I'm putting them in the same one. The first one is, uh, in this case we've used uh, medium deep 5 for this skin color, and what a lot of people don't know is, you can color the palms and the foot soles separately, so if we copy this color and we make it brighter, paler that is uh, we can then put it down here uh, maybe not that pale but you see we'll get a much more realistic look to this uh, because uh, the, these these things are auto colored with the same color as the rest of the skin if you don't individually color them which which uh, it takes away from a bit of the detail it might not bother most people but it bothers me uh, and the, the second tip is um, I've always said that if you want an arrogant look on a character you should raise confused because you see it kind of it, it raises this lip in a very kind of questioning way. What a lot of people don't know is that you can actually also combine Confuse with Cocky in order to get a smile where you're not showing the teeth. So let me show you. If I pull this up, you will always have the teeth. And I've colored them very bright green to, to show you know the, the outline. But if you, and if you raise Cocky, you get kind of a smile that doesn't show the teeth, but it's very one-sided and iffy. But if we combine them, so if I pull up, you see now we have a smile that doesn't look too arrogant, it doesn't look too cocky, and it also doesn't show the teeth. So combining cocky and confused are a good way. And obviously, you know, when we get the face customized, we'll probably find better ways to do all this stuff. But, you know, for now, this is this is the best we have. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, enjoy. Now, um, speaking of face tips, this one is also pretty simple, but it's something that a lot of people don't use, and it is... Um, Let's say you've picked, you know, a female character or whatever, or, or a male character, but you feel like you don't want them to look as, as either as dainty as they look or as ooga booga as they look. And uh, your first intake might be, okay, this is going to be a strong lady, so, and this face is not quite doing it, so I guess I'll go for the heavy features. But then you're like, ah, do I really want to look like a human square? Probably not. Uh, and a better solution is simply to pull down or up the softness. As you can see, as I edit this, like this is the male face, and now it looks very jarring because you've just seen the female version, but if you pull it somewhere in between, like maybe leave it at 70 or so, it is going to look a little bit sharper than the initial female face did before, uh, but not as, you know, it, it doesn't go so far that it looks like a man now, and this the same goes for, for male faces, you know, if, if, if you were to pretend that like this was a dude in the first place, uh, ignore the makeup and whatnot, uh, then you could also pull down the softness of it if you want younger or daintier features, you know, it's it's up to you, it depends on what you're making. But I, at least if I'm making characters that aren't quite, you know, so clear cut, I like to, I like to mess around with the softness. And um, speaking of femininity, a nice little clothing trick. Um, I've shown before how you can make like stockings with, with decals using using this thing here and whatnot. 
Um, but what I haven't shown is how you can do it with clothing. And very similarly to how, you know, I, I, this is also something I've shown before, but uh, you, you can have these kind of dress gloves using these artificial arms. But what I haven't shown is how you can do this with the legs. And um, what you do is basically you want to pick the paladins plate leggings and then you know you can also put on some boots if we want to try go for something feminine then I guess something like these um, now the pose got a bit awkward so let me just quickly change that yeah something like this and basically what you want to do is let's say we just uh, color this in real quick and basically all we need to do now is we take the skin color, medium D5, as is the base one, and on this specific tile here, we just make that skin. That's it. And if you look really closely, you're going to be able to see, yeah, this looks a bit funky. There's a bit of a sharp edge here, and it doesn't really look like skin, but most people are not going to notice that. And this, you know, if, it's it's a nice little touch. You know, I, I haven't used this myself, but I know that it's, it's actually quite popular on the Reddit, so I figured I would showcase it at least briefly. Now, for the next tip, you might notice something a little bit weird about this weapon that I put in this lady's hand. And um, that is because it is, in fact, two weapons. And you can see there's a little bit of clipping going on here. And that is essentially because this axe right here is one of the only decent single-edged axes in, in her forge. Uh, but it's very short, so if you want a long axe with a long hilt, you need to combine it with another weapon and there's a lot of different ways you can do weapon combinations and this is just a very basic and easy to use example right um, and I will obviously it's easier with two models because then you can just two, put two weapons in the same hand but you can also if you want to get really really fancy include a second arm and clip it into this arm and hold it and a third thing here that will extend it even further so uh, I'll see if I can show you Alright, so I ignore the fact that there are still two arms over here. Um, the point was, if you're not combining a weapon by making one hand hold a long spear and the other hand hold an axe, as I did in the first example, you can also combine them by simply having two arms gl glitch into one. And that's what I've done here. There is some minor clipping here, but it's barely noticeable, and it, it doesn't take that long to figure out how to do this, even if it is easier with two models. And what I've done here is I've effectively made a Vecta Corbin, uh, or a raven's beak, as it's called in English, and it is this this pike that has um, both a spear at the end as well as this uh, this pike here and the hammer here. It was a very popular medieval weapon, specifically for breaking through metal plated armor. But what if you color all this in and you find that you're still not quite happy with the detail of this weapon or any weapon for that matter? This is not specific to the double weapon trick. But uh, maybe you, you, if you're not already going to use these decals, and as I said, with the new TK decals, you can do a lot of cool stuff. Like you could probably make a rust. I, I've seen a few people do that. Um, sorry, that was the wrong one. Uh, you could otherwise uh, do some very nice kind of outlining with these decals, the splatter decals. So if I move this up, oh, not scale, uh, like this, and I put this on the side like this. And then I simply take the same color that I've already used and I put this down here and then I raise the brightness significantly. Now you see there's a lot of different effects. I mean you can make it look like Damascus steel with this but what I like is just to have a brighter edge because a lot of the time when you sharpen steel it will also begin to look brighter on the edges than it does in the middle. Now in my last tip video I went over how you can make like these nice kind of faded tattoos but um what I will do now is how I can show you how to make more like high fantasy kind of glowing under tattoos but not ones that are too direct so like in there's differences between some of these decals right like this one has very straight and clear lines and this one is good if you want to make a tattoo like the one I did last time but this one where you can see it kind of fades in and out here and there um, 
if we take this and we make it like a really bright green glow, so like we're gonna up the glow as much as we can. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, now this is really, really glowing, and obviously this this is not what you want. Really, this doesn't look like a realistic tattoo at all. I mean, to be fair, this isn't gonna look realistic at all. But we then put on on the overlayer the same one again, and then let's say we make it kind of dark greenish because that makes sense in this case. Now, you see this? It has that glowing green outline, and I'll show you what happens if we take away the lower one. If we take away it now, see, yeah, it just turns into dark green. Um, and it's not so high fantasy that it looks far-fetched. This, in my opinion, honestly doesn't look that unrealistic as well. It's just a very, very nice uh, tattoo. And, I, and I'll show you, you can do this with all over the place, you know, it's not just face limited. Now, as you can see, I have done the same thing on the body, and you know, you you, you can toy around with these. It, like as I said, it's a lot uh, easier to do with the with the ones that don't have super clear lines. In this case, the lines are very faded. But uh, obviously, if you were doing like a tattoo, like uh, or a decal, like like this one, these straight lines, it would not look quite as noticeable. But even then, you can see it. So you know, I implore you to uh, mess around with it yourself and uh, figure it out. Now, for the last normal tip, the tenth tip that I'll show, let's not pretend that anything about this model looks normal or decent, but, um, fittingly, we are going to make use of this second arm here that's wasted, so let's first just correct the positioning of, of this one a little bit. I'm not gonna go out of my way to fix it, but, uh, you know, there, that will, uh, that'll have to do for now. Um, and what we're gonna do is... I will make, eventually, a dedicated video towards tail and arm posing and what you can do with it, but in this case I'm just gonna go give you a little bit of a like sneak peek kind of into something you can do, and I'm gonna need a moment to post this, so I'll probably time-lapse it, but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna twist this arm here, uh, this extra fourth arm, into the body here, and then we're gonna put a medal in his hand, and I actually I can do that now real quick. Uh, if we type amulet and then let's say we oh, that's the wrong hand we take this one uh, amulet and this golden amulet is going to be put over the chest here as a metal and as i said this is just a very very simple example um you can do a lot more advanced stuff than this but as a starter tip i will slap this in here And there we, there we go. That is uh, literally all it takes. And now you have kind of a hanging metal on, on top of this uh, this chest piece. And this works with all of the amulets. It works with a hell of a lot of other items. It works with shields. You can smack a massive shield on top of the chest piece if you want. And uh, there is sometimes some clipping here. I could do this further to the point where there's no clipping. You know, uh, it is possible. But as I said before, I am trying to keep this video a bit limited. So I'm just showing the fundamentals of how you do it. And if you do have some clipping you can't get away from, then just hide it with a cloak. It's, it's not that difficult. Um, but yes, as I said, I will eventually make a dedicated video for this kind of thing. But uh, not yet, because honestly, I'm kind of dreading it. Now, as I said, there was going to be one uh, pro tip at the end of this video, and that is what I will get to now. And effectively, what that is, is how you can make properly closed eyes. And in the past, I have tipped about making closed eyes by simply coloring over the eyeball, but that is obviously not as good as what I've done here. And effectively, this is... It is a finicky tip that won't always work because it kind of depends a little bit on your base posing. But as you can see here, I effectively you have the either the extra or the main model is moved slightly ahead of the other model, and then the eyelids are turned up or down. So as you can see, yeah, this is the main model I'm messing around with now. And as you can see, I have pulled this one all the way down, and then on the extra model. I have pulled it all the way down. So you see the lower eyelid is pulled up with the extra model by making it look vertically upwards and on the main model it's looking vertically downwards. Now you can't completely close the eye but you can come damn well close to it. So if I put normal eyes in here real quick, um, yeah you, you can see it looks, it looks a little bit cursed um, and I think this is... So yeah you, you, you can see where the real eye is and if I 
continue to pull up the eyelid like this and I simply color in again with the base with the skin color I had here. Now you can see it is effectively a closed eye and as I said you kind of need to toy around with this a little bit. It's not all that easy to accomplish. You can also make squinted eyes as I will show a few examples of here. But essentially all it comes down to is just combining two models, having one of them slightly ahead of the other, and then you remove the eye with one of them. That's very important. So in this case, it's the extra model that has the eyeball. And uh, if you made it this far, then uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any tips of your own, by the way, either just to share, or if you feel like there's something special uh, that I should feature in one of these videos in the future, then by all means, uh, go into the comments and, and, and let me know, you know... Uh, Airport is a is, is a great mystery as they say and uh, only with our powers combined can we achieve unlimited powers and um, As always if you like this video then press like and if you dislike this video then uh, press dislike